Hey there folks and welcome to another update on the geologic situation in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Wednesday, May 7th. And I looked in the last uh, update I'd done on Iceland was about two weeks ago. So I thought it was time for another update. We have a new Met Office update that just came out yesterday to discuss. They've been um, a bit uh, spaced out as well in terms of their uh, frequency of reporting on this area as well. It's just kind of a slow time right now as we're between uh, eruptive episodes or intrusive events, whatever the case may be. But we're we're kind of in the lull between these events as more magma continues to accumulate in this region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data. And let's start with our Met Office update. Uh, this is from yesterday, May 6th. The big highlights here is that uplift is continuing under Svartsengi. So just above that ma magma storage zone, we're still seeing clear indications with the GPS signals and the INSAR data of ground deformation. The ground is rising as more magma moves into that shallow storage zone from depth. That's causing the ground and the land above it to rise, although it's at a slower rate than it was previously. So that's where extra extrapolating this data and trying to get a forecast window of exactly when something is going to happen uh, in the near future is a little tricky because the rates aren't linear. Um, they seem to be slowing at times, and so it makes it a little tricky to figure out what exactly is going on. So the Met Office is um, saying, based on those rates, that the likelihood of a new eruption uh, is going to increase as autumn approaches. Now, that's kind of a vague statement. That doesn't necessarily mean that the new eruption will be in the fall and depends on when you define fall you know in terms of meteorologically or you know celestially or whatever um, but as we get i guess towards well into summer and start getting into late summer that 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 likelihood increases so they're kind of um, covering their bases a little bit there the seismic activities dropped over the last few weeks we'll take a look at that and so those are actually the the big highlights from the med office update kind of a short update and the second part of the update they talk about here and this is just an important caveat for us all to remember and recognize and that is when we're looking at this data it's easy to get um very fixated and very kind of captivated by the short-term data trends you might see one data point on the gps data and then you know a, a day or two later you see a couple more points and maybe in this case it's it's a steep trend and what they're encouraging us to do here is to be a little bit cautious and conservative with any sort of interpretation that you really there's a lot of factors that can affect that deformation data weather measurement of errors other factors and so we really need to be looking at long-term trends versus short-term trends so looking at like five data points in a row is probably not the time frame we should be you know making any predictions or any sort of forecast we should really be looking at what's going on over at least a week or more in order to get a sense of what that data trend might be showing so that's just a nice reminder for all of us the hazard uh, assessment maps largely unchanged so that's the, the met office update very brief again um, but some important points there looking at the earthquakes over the past week in Iceland. Um, not much on the Reykjanes Peninsula. There was, uh, well, I'll get to the, the week-long map. This is just the 24 hours. So you can see over the 24-hour period, uh, just a few very tiny earthquakes down here near Grindavik, uh, all less than magnitude one. Uh, let's see if we can pull in any of the smaller ones. Yeah, a few of those negative magnitude earthquakes showing up there. Um, but not much happening, just a little bit of activity sort of at the southwest end of that dike intrusion, but at least over the 24 hours, really no earthquakes at the northeast end of that intrusion that appeared on April 1st. If we look at the last week or so uh, in Iceland, there was some um, bigger earthquakes over here near Barabunga, 3.5. Uh, you can see some of these uh, slightly bigger quakes over here. There's a 2.8, but again, no evidence that those were magmatic in origin in terms of like, you know, magma making its way to the surface. Those could be subsurface quakes. And then this cluster here that we've been seeing for a while uh, north of Reykjavik, uh, again, bunch of twos, still pretty deep though, 18 uh, kilometers down. Again, no evidence yet that these are 
related to magma migration as well. The Met Office, I believe, is putting out some more instruments and sensors here. So over the next few months and through the summer, we should get a better feel of what these are. Are these, um, you know, of just fault movements uh, in the crust or are they produced by maybe something else like magma movement. Moving down to the Reykjanes Peninsula and looking at the last week, you can see the overall pattern and orientation of the dike there. Uh, so the cluster here around Grindavik, notice these are all really small quakes though. I mean, there's the biggest of the lot and that's a magnitude one. Uh, continuing, up, continuing up through the Sunukur crater and then we did have some at the northeast end of the dike but notice a lot of those are in blue which are the uh ones that would be about a week old so a 1.8 um 1.7 so not a lot of quakes happening in the last few days but within the last week we have had a few there so that's typical of what we saw we've seen since the april 1st event is the majority of the seismic activity has been at either tip of this magmatic intrusion, not as much in the middle, but we're seeing a definite decrease in just terms of overall seismic activity um, along this, in this region. We did have a little cluster here near Fagradelsfjall, but again, no indications from ground deformation that those are related to um, at least, you know, more magma moving into the system. We saw no ground deformation associated with those earthquakes. So what those mean uh, is is um, not totally known, but they're fairly small quakes. And so not super alarming uh, at this point. And remember too, that this dike intrusion on April 1st really changed the stress regime of th these rocks and the, the crust on the Reykjanes Peninsula, such that, you know, we might be seeing earthquakes triggered, that wouldn't have normally occurred had that magmatic intrusion not taken place. Uh, if we switch over to the GPS data, um, and let's pick Svartsengi first, but we don't have to just stick with this one. Um, and let's make that a little bit bigger. So let's open that up. So here is the uh, up and down movement of the Svartsengi station over the last three months. So we can see that steady accumulation, upward trend, inflationary trend, up until we get to the April 1st event. And then of course, deflation as magma moved out of the storage zone up to the surface. And then since that time, we had initially uh, quite a rapid rate of inf influx or inflation. Um, but you can see over the past few weeks that that's kind of settled into a more consistent kind of slope here. And so this is where, you know, the, the uh, forecasts and extrapolation of this data can kind of run all over the place. It looks like we're up to, you know, this this reference line here, this zero uh, mark right here. And if you go back to where, when the last time we were at that elevation prior to April 1st, it looks like it was late February, or excuse me, early February or so. So again, just a, a one possible interpretation and by no means um, something I would want to hang my hat on is it took from early February it took all of February, all of March to get to the erupt, small eruption and intrusion we had in, in early April. And if we think we're kind of at that same point now, if we assume a similar trend, which is again, a huge assumption, then you're looking at, yeah, maybe two full more months, maybe like mid, late July, uh, no, sorry, early July, and more likely further than that. I think a lot of the projections uh, have it further out than that. So that's just one way to look at some of the GPS data and play games like that. Uh, our good friend Bruce Garner used to have really uh, interesting models and I haven't heard from him in a while. So Bruce, if you're out there and you want to, if you have time and you want to share some of your uh, spreadsheets and graphs showing how this might play out, uh, we're always, we, we have a pretty good audience for that. We have folks that are uh, interested in looking at that. Uh, you can look at any n n one of the number of seismic stations here and pretty much see the same sort of trend. Uh, everything's still showing uplift. It just seems to be uh, slowing down quite a bit over what we saw earlier. So even like these ones that are further away from the magma storage zone, you can see a little bit of an upward trend there in those in that data. So the ground deformation is still uh, moving along as showing uplift in this magma storage zone here, but 
just because the magma is stored here, imagine this inflating like a balloon, it's still affecting some of these more um, distant GPS stations. So we're still seeing the signal of this inflation and this magma accumulation in these more distant locations shown by the little blue pins here. Uh, if we look at the last batch of INSAR data, that also jives pretty well with what we've seen uh, with the GPS data. So here is uh, the Terrasar satellite data from April 20th to May 1st. And again, you can see that clear bullseye pattern there. Maybe uh, one, two, three, looks like yellow, three yellow fringes. So that's maybe um, about four and a half centimeters or so of uplift data since um, from April 20th when they made the first pass and the satellite went over this area almost from north south to north and it was looking out to the right so that's what that arrow uh, symbol means there so again you can sort of see where the centralized uplift is and it's just a bit south of the power plant blue lagoon area that seems to be where the magma is accumulating and then we know that it has established this conduit system uh, by moving laterally to the east and then it's able to move upwards towards the surface along that dike that exists uh, from just west of Grindavik up towards um, this uh, this northern area here out by uh, the mountain Kalir. So that's some of the data we have so far. Uh, one little news uh, story, thanks to Amanda Joe for sending this to me, um, is just one about like you know when when this might occur. It's unlikely to make news until fall at the earliest. That is maybe a bit of the Google Translate from Icelandic to English, but they talked to Benedict Ofigson. Um, we continue to see land rise, but it's slowing and there's little indication that anything's going to happen in the near future. So we are in this sort of wait and see mode. We're definitely between events. The big event was April 1st, and now we're probably looking at weeks, maybe a few months before we see um, any evidence before we sort of enter that window and see evidence that there's going to be another event. And that event could be another intrusion, uh, possibly another eruption, or like we saw April 1st, a bit of both. We had April 1st was uh, an interesting hybrid event where we had, you know, I would say 80 plus percent of what took place was actually subsurface intrusion, magma moving into new, fresh, real estate but underground and then we had a small eruption just north of the town itself so i'll continue to monitor this along with you good folks um, i'm actually heading to iceland here at the end of the month i'll be there for a couple days and then i'm going to take some folks around on a field trip so i'll be there uh, from late may into early june so hoping to maybe do a couple videos while i'm down there uh, talk to some folks and we'll just see what happens. But very unlikely that I'll be there at the time when the next event occurs because it's looking based on the data that like that won't be till probably late summer uh, into early fall or so. But that's my update for now. Uh, hope you're well. Thanks for your support of the channel and we'll catch you next time, friends. Take care.